Are you confused about why you miss your back end over and over again and still miss it when it really counts in your match? One of the most under-practiced skills is not sending the ball, it's receiving the ball. So the key to improving your match play backhand is to practice your movement to your backhand. Getting to the ball, loading in the appropriate stance, and then using the best contact move when striking the ball is how you make your backhand its best. In this backhand video series, we are going to explore with you these incredible combinations of stances and contact moves to give you more confidence and consistency with your backhand in competitive play. Hi, I'm Sterling Strother and this is The Art of Winning. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the alert notification. Okay, to continue our back end series, today we're going to do something a little bit unique. Um, most videos you watch on the back end, they're mainly talking about sending the ball. And we've done videos here at, on the back end series at The Art of Winning on sending the ball. But today, we're going to tackle this idea of as a player, or even as, as a coach, you, your players come to you and you say, how did you play? And they say, I just missed my backhand. I missed tons of backhands, right? I missed them long or I missed them wide or maybe my backhand just stunk today or maybe you're feeling that way. Like you played a match, you hit your backhand great in practice, but in the match it was just falling apart. The question I have for both you as a player and you as a coach if you're watching this is what kind of backhand did you miss? Okay, there's, there's different types of backhands. And so what you want to do is you want to drill down to which actual backhand you missed and then work from there, sort of reverse engineer. And so we're going to go through a couple of backhands a day that could be problematic that you might be dealing with. And we're going to talk about as a player, how do you, what do you ask yourself when you miss your backhand, right? Do you just react emotionally to it? and say, I can't, I can't believe my backhand's failed me today or it's letting me down? Or do you go through a series of sort of questioning objectively, what happened, why did you miss that backhand, then what's the adjustment quickly that you can make? We're also gonna talk today about the backhand as far as the swing path, okay? So we're really gonna nail down the swing path of the racket. I know I just released a one-handed backhand video, maybe you've seen it, if you're not, you can go back go back to the channel and uh, look there for the one-handed world-class one-handed backhand. One of the things that I want to emphasize is that one-handed backhand getting you to hit, get the racket going forward through the ball. That is the beginning stages of a one-handed backhand. Really, what you really want to happen is you really want to hit the outside or the inside of the ball and hit up and across the ball. Okay, so finding your one-handed backhand going up and through the ball you want elevation obviously but the more the really the more advanced way to hit this one-handed backhand and even two-handed backhand that we'll do today is hitting more up and across this way okay so you're 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 at a 45 degree angle or even a 30 degree angle if the ball is higher up in your strike zone so we're going to tackle that today with the two-handed backhand. So Pierce, you've come to me sometimes and you've said, hey, I said, I didn't see your match. And you're like, how did, how did you play? And you're like, well, my forehand, you know, seemed to hit my forehand well, but I was having troubles with my backhand. And so again, I would have to ask you, okay, what, which one did you miss? Did you miss your backhand return on add? Did you miss your backhand return on deuce? Was it the backhand after the return? Right? Were you moving in reverse to get it? Were you running to it? These are the types of probing questions that you need to ask as a player yourself or as a coach, you need to uh, inquire with your player. Dig deep, have a conversation about which backhand are they really having trouble with. So one of the things, I had a player come to me today actually, and they were having problems with their back and I said which one is it the one shoulder height or the one in your strike zone he said well it's the one shoulder height okay well let's go through that and I'm gonna you're gonna we're gonna do this with you today I'm gonna hit you some balls it's gonna bounce high you're gonna have this back end around your shoulder height and let's see how you handle it 
and then we're going to go through this teaching moment with you so that you can break it down yourself as a player if you're watching this and you don't have a coach or you have a coach and y'all can work it out together with the coach okay so let's have you on the baseline all right i'm going to feed you in this high backhand okay all right and i'm going to stay on this side of the court just for, so i can see it a little bit better okay so here we go so you're going to get that high backhand okay here we go all right that's in all right good that's in too okay here we go again all right oh that one was out okay so so here's let's let me ask you what you noticed the last one you hit which side of the ball do you think you contacted on the last one? You missed it wide left, so wide add. Where do you think you hit the ball? On the outside of the ball, the inside of the ball? Let's start with that first. The outside. last. You did hit the last one that you missed on the outside of the ball. The ones you made before that, the two before that, where do you think you hit? More the inside or more the outside? The inside. That is correct, more inside. Now, what I saw as a coach and what you want to realize is, go to contact, Pierce. When you get a high backhand and you try to hit the outside of the ball, that takes a tremendous amount of timing, okay? It takes a tremendous amount of energy to get to the outside of a ball that's high and then bring it back in because the tendency is, is when you reach around and get the outside of the ball and, you're kind of, and it's high, you're going to pull the racket, tend to pull the racket down because you're trying to get to the outside and here comes the physics of it. It's going to just pull down. So the reason why you had a lot of trouble with that last one in getting it in is you tend to pull too much, maybe even down and across. Now, the swing path for this high backhand is if this was zero degrees, my racket is at zero degrees. So if you went straight across, trace my racket. That's zero degrees, all right? So now I'm going to turn it at 45 degrees, okay, because this was the 90. So 45. So trace my high backhand, high backhand, and go 45. That's, kind, that's a lot, right? That's going to create this heavy, loopy ball, right? May even really lobby, right? So what you want to look for is if you take the high backhand, you want to change this 45 to like 30 degrees. So you still want to go up and across, all right? But you want to go more 30 degree swing path. Now, one of the things I like for you to do is focus on the inside of the ball when you make contact. So get to the inside of the ball. That's the outside, get to the inside. Yeah, reap the, that's the inside and now pull up and across. Okay, so what I want Pierce to do is hit the in more the inside of the ball swing a little bit more 30 degrees so that's still up and across okay create more side spin on the ball okay and let's see how it looks all right all right here you go ready that was more of the there it is right there now that one made it there that was the that was that was about two feet inside of the one you missed. It was still close to the line. How did that one feel compared to the one you hit, tried to hit to the outside of the ball? It was way smoother. It, it was smoother, okay. Right, because you're, you're hitting more of the ball because you're hitting the inside of the ball. How did it feel balance-wise? Did you feel like you kind of, did you feel like your balance was falling to the right down or do you feel like you were going more through the ball with your body? more through the ball what did you feel like the racket was still trying to do up and across or, or down up and, across. up and across okay let's do this again oh I like that one good good now obviously the more you hit up on the ball the more height you can create so that can equal depth Remember, depth has created the combination of speed and height, okay? And then the spin plays a part of it as well, but it's really speed and speed and height that creates depth, okay? All right, the combinations of those. All right, with the spin, okay, so we're creating the spin. So now, 
that would be so we if I was if I was playing you and you were having pro problems with the high backhand shoulder height we would break it down like that okay try to create more success the next one would be let's go low and low and in your strike zone so low outside and in your strike zone let's see how you hit it let's see what you do first inside or outside and then we'll go from there all right here we go low okay come on split step good split step good all right and here okay okay now the question is that I have you Pierce is are the balls bouncing deep in the court or more short in the court middle of the back court or deep in the back court where are the balls bouncing they're bouncing deep okay they're bouncing deep now do you where do you where would you like to take this ball where would you like to take this ball if you're outside here what do you think is is a good a good solid high percentage shot to see to see okay right the ad cage all right d would be the corner ad corner so would you want to hit this ball necessarily on the outside of the ball or the inside of the ball if it's deep the outside the outside well let's try it you try hitting the outside of the ball Okay, that's, does that feel like it's difficult to get to the outside of the ball? Yeah. Now, one of the things that if you notice, he's staying, you're staying close to the baseline. You're not giving up any ground, okay? So if you, if you may, maybe moved a little bit more at an angle away from the ball, you might give yourself time to get to the outside of the ball if that's what you want to do. So let's stick with what you want to do. You'd like to hit the outside of the ball and you'd like to make it go into C. Instead of moving straight across and staying right close to the baseline, move more of an angle, okay, and give yourself some space to get to the outside of the ball since the ball is bouncing deep in the court. Okay, you ready? Okay, was, was that easier to attack the outside of the ball by moving more diagonally reverse? Yeah. Okay, so this is a good point. Like, so I didn't fight my player on what he wanted to do. I didn't try to talk him out of hitting the outside of the ball. I just, we just went through what would be more effective in, his, in the direction that he moved to hit the outside of the ball. Well. It's really difficult, and the level of difficulty is high, rather, if you move straight across the baseline, hold your ground close to the baseline and hit the outside of the ball. Your swing path probably is gonna have to change a bit. There's gonna have to be a lot of modification that goes on if you do that. But what we did was we changed one thing. We changed which way you moved, and then we basically got you to hit the outside of the ball. Do what you wanna do, right? Now, here's what I'd like for you to do now. I like for you to hold the baseline like you were before, but this time hit more of the inside of the ball and go right into C, the same spot, same place. This way, when he hits the inside of the ball, he's gonna feel more of the ball on his strings. He's gonna feel a little bit more control. He should feel like he's hit, still hitting across the ball, but creating more of a side spin and not top spin. Okay, all right, so here we go. Good. Awesome. The inside of the ball. Don't pull up. Pull up and across. 30 degrees. Almost. Pull across your body. There. All right. Prepare your racket a little earlier. Okay, so your preparation, okay, so, so he's starting to, to hit the inside of the ball, but the, what I'm noticing is, do you feel like your racket preparation is rushed? Yeah. Do you feel like you're, ra you're rushing back to the ball? Yeah. 
So what I'd like for you to do then is to, as you begin to move, start to turn into position so that when you get to the ball, the racket is already ready to come forward. So you want to time the backswing so that when you make that last step with your left foot, the racket is set, right? Now, I don't want you to do the Serena Williams where you go like that, <laughs> all right? I don't want you to like jerk it back fast and then hold it back here as you run, okay? That's one way of doing it, but I'd rather you try to time the backswing slowly as you move in position so that you're here so everything feels fluid, okay? So you're moving here, boom, boom, like that. Okay, try that, let's do that. Still rushed, right? You waited too long, you're not turning initially right here. You gotta turn initially right here, turn. How did that one feel? Okay, turn. All right, now we got it, turn. A little bit better turn sooner. Okay, come on. You got it. You're turning too fast. You got to turn slower by and turn sooner to turn slower. Now. Okay. Okay, so you could see right there and we're going to do some shots from the other side. You could see how he was Pierce was timing his backswing better. As he was moving to this ball, he's moving his racket into position so that when he loads he's not still taking the racket back he's already loaded and then he's firing from the left hip how did those feel comfortable wise very comfortable, very comfortable. did it feel smooth yes. didn't feel fast and jerky no. right do you feel the control that started to happen with your stroke yes. because it was better timed timing cannot be overemphasized here in the, in the execution of, a, of the stroke, of the swing path, right? The backswing has to be timed well with the incoming ball, and then the forward swing is timed as the ball bounces and is coming up into your racket, okay? So this is something that you work on, but it's not just a, this is not just a normal backhand, if someone would say. It's, this is a backhand where you're hitting where the ball is bouncing deep. Actually, let's do some front. Come over here with me. So you hit the same shot inside with a smooth take back. So start soon. Go. That was rushed. That's it. That's it. Much better. Two more. Good. Smooth turn quickly. No, they didn't. That was a miss hit on the inside of the ball. Inside of the ball. There it is right there. Okay. So again, the swing path here is, is up and across your body. And it's not too high. It's not this 45 degrees up. It's more across and like 30 degrees. Okay. And I know I'm using degrees and this may seem complicated, but it's not that complicated, guys. It's 0, 90 and then 45 and then just a little bit more than less than 45 is the 30 okay and that's what you need to really start to work through okay these backhands I'm gonna feed the ball a little shorter you're gonna be able to step into the ball or step down to the ball and pivot okay let's see how you handle these okay this will be into your backhand short okay that was missed okay let's let's talk about turning the racket okay and using the left hand, I know we did another video on talk, talking about turning the doorknob, okay? So we're here and we're turning the doorknob, right? But we're not just turning it like this here at the ball. We're turning it as, as a part of the swing, as a part of the full swing, like this. So it's not this quick turn like this at the ball. This is not what we're talking about. Turning the doorknob. It's turning the doorknob as we're elevating the racket up and across our body. So it's a timing, again, of the turn. It's not super quick and fast and jerky like this. It's smooth and over and across. Okay, so what did you feel like when you missed the ball long on this? Did you feel enough turning or not enough? Not enough. 
not enough okay so when you're when you're missing the ball deep on just a step down pivot the ball's in front of you if you miss a deep you just didn't turn enough okay and you kind of left the racket open it doesn't have enough spin on the ball all right now if you miss in the net it could be a variety of things okay you could have turned it too fast you could have hit too much of the inside and just pushed it down and forward okay so these are the types of things that you want to start to figure out okay how first of all did I like my contact point was it high enough was it was it low if it's low you got to turn it up and more okay if it's about right you just got to time it where you like it okay get the result you want go into C Can you prepare a little bit sooner? That one was much smoother, okay? That swing to me was much smoother because again, like the like the deep one here, when you're moving, you're turning the racket in position, and then when you plant that front foot to step down to the ball, the racket is already here in the at the furthest part of your here there and it's smooth so there's a smoothness to your stroke if you're able to time your movement and your backswing together your movement toward the ball and then the preparation stage okay see a lot of players they get really they prepare too early okay or they prepare too late right and you want to find that balance okay so let's mix them up let's go high and then let's go short okay so two different uh, swing paths here and see if you can put them together good go back So as a player, when you're trying to tackle which backhand in the match that you're having a hard time dealing with, which one are you making more errors on, you need to pinpoint actually which one it is. Not just your backhand is failing you, but which one. Is it the high shoulder height backhand? Or is it the step down? Or is it the deep one that's almost jamming you, if you will, and you're trying to hit either the outside of the ball or the inside of the ball. Thanks for watching today. If you want to find more videos on our YouTube channel, you can click the notification button and it'll notify you of our latest video. Also subscribe here if you want to uh, be a part of this community. Would love to have your comments. Be kind. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Hey, thanks for watching this video and check out the other videos in this series here.